Well, folks, something happened today that, uh, or really yesterday, that's quite embarrassing. My Zelda fan card needs to be revoked, especially my Zelda expertise fan card needs to be removed. Now, why did I even have a Zelda fan card? It's not because I have fancy sweatshirt and a whole bunch of, uh, you know, merchandise related to Zelda. That doesn't, you can't buy your way into being a Zelda mega fan. I actually used to be someone who made a living talking about creating theories and being an expert in the Legend of Zelda field. I ran a Zelda fan site in ZeldaInformer.com for roughly 10 years as editor-in-chief. Did that for a living for a while. Before that, I did other various Zelda fan sites, podcasts, and news reporting. Really, since I was 12. I'm 35. I've played every single Zelda game known to man, including the CDI ones, including all of the Tingle games and the spin-off ones. I've played everything start to finish at least one time, and most of the Zelda series I have played multiple times. Um, in fact, the game that I am losing my fan card because of is one that is not only rated as the greatest game of all time, it also is one that I just beat two months ago. And yesterday we had a podcast! Oh, folks, we had the Nintendo Prime Podcast. It was back. It was glorious. We had some good talks. And while Andre's restart was on there, he brought up this idea of remastering, remaking, Ocarina of Time, and would it sell well, and all this. We had a nice little fun debate. But right after that, we got into a little bit of something uh, because I don't rank Ocarina of Time in my top 10 Zelda games of all time. And he wanted uh, to know uh, why. And we went through my list of games I ranked ahead of it and stuff like that. They weren't really necessarily in perfect order uh, because I have to sit down and think about it. Doing it off the top of my head is a bit difficult. I actually have the list written down somewhere, but that's neither here nor there. One thing that came up well, uh, that he mentioned was undeniably great about Ocarina of Time is, well, the ending. Um, how the ending went, the whole sequence and everything. And this is where I went off the rails. And it's not just that I was wrong about the ending. It's not just that I forgot how Ocarina of Time ended. I literally misremembered the entire ending of the game and was so vehement that I was remembering it correctly that we ended up in a 40-minute back-and-forth I, would we call it a, 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 an argument? We weren't really mad at each other. We talked after the after the uh, the podcast for a bit. But um, here's a, here's just a, a small clip of the idiocy I was spewing last night. So another thing that I think Ocarina of Time handles better than most games, period, is just how it ends. Um, it has one of the strongest endings. Uh, it, this is not. This is. This is not a. This is. You. You're making a face, but this is not like an alien opinion. This is. This is a. This is a, a common opinion. Okay, that game had a really, really awesome. Like, the whole sort of lead up to the to the castle, triumphing the castle, getting to the top, see, hearing the build up of the organ up the steps. Sure. Finally, duking it out with Gandorf, rescuing Zelda. Him having this crazy explosion, you think he's dead, but then the tower starts to crash, you have to race down with Zelda, running with her, fighting through Stalfos, getting attacked by fire and rocks and crashing walls, to get out in time, that's all exhilarating, and then everything just crashes down, and you think you're done, you've just gone through a gauntlet, because yeah. uh, the fight's hard, like, Ocarina Time was challenging, and the, even going down the tower is challenging, but then after that, there's one more fight. And he evolves into sure. Ganon. That's when he becomes Ganon, which is also a crazy thing. It shows when Ganondorf becomes Ganon, which is a huge story thing. And you have that fight, and there's this moment where he knocks out the Master Sword, and you also don't have access to Navi. Like, well, you get Navi during the Ganon fight, but you don't have access. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, it, yeah but the point is, like, the sword it, and... there, there are these moments that that entire series of battles does it you, 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 it makes you feel uncomfortable for moments and how, how does the game end and then the final end you slash the heck out of his head and you stab him in there which is very satisfying and you know then it has a pretty somber ending which i think was kind of cool uh most games don't end that strong so breath of the wild did not end it that took strong. me when i was a kid it took me two years to be doctor in the time 
Um, this was because I didn't own it. I kept having to rent it from, <laughs> from Blockbuster. So um, it was one of those situations where I didn't get to play it as often as I wanted to. Um, I thought everything about that sequence was epic and cool and amazing. I didn't think the actual fights were that difficult. But the escape sequence and all that, that, that was hard. Like the tennis match, was not that difficult. The you know going underneath his body and slashing his tail, again, not that difficult. At that point, I had faced harder things in the game than those fights. However, however, the whole sequence of events is really cool. And the organ playing. That I agree. That's all really, really cool. And there hasn't really been moments really comparable necessarily to that exact thing in other Zelda games. There's been attempts at it that haven't really been as great. I would argue, though, that none of that's even the ending. The ending is they send you back to being a kid. And when you get sent back to being a kid... I understand in the grand context this creates a timeline split, all the, whatever. But you get sent back to being a kid, and factually, I'm sitting here playing this as a kid. I'm sent back to being a kid, and the game just starts all over again. Which made me feel like, one, I'm one, I'm stuck in a time loop, and two, nothing I did mattered. All this epicness doesn't matter because I have to do it all over again just to get the same ending. All, which, by the way, I did play all the way to the end again, thinking that it would be different, and it wasn't. I just got sent back to being a kid again, yeah. which created an infinite time loop, which to me meant nothing I did mattered. The real story here is I'm stuck in an infinite time loop, and there's no way out. And that's the real story of Ocarina of Time, is there's no way out. That's, now, you find out later, the timeline can explain Hyrule Storia. I, I grow up, yeah. you find out that's not really what's happening. But as a child, how, what else am I supposed to think? Oh, I'm sending you back to your childhood so you can have a childhood. I mean, a childhood where my mom is still gone, and I'm still abandoned, and everything bad is still about to happen. Because nothing I did happened yet. The game, it felt like the game ripped it from me. It ripped my entire journey from me and said, here you go, become a kid and do it all over again. That's what it feels like. Well, like I know they explain it in some different ways, but factually, you restart the game. That's not how I interpret it. I interpret it as they have already a knowledge of what's to, what's to come. To me, and it was like prepared. the most disappointing ending to a Zelda game I've ever experienced. You go through the all other this, thing is your whole goal is to save Zelda, and you're trying to be awesome, and you finally get to the end. You're supposed to have this nice, happy ending, and you're going to be with Zelda forever, and it's going to be all great. Whether we're boyfriend or girl, it don't really matter. Point is, we did this together, and she's like, oh, you lost seven years of your life. Oh, you didn't have your childhood. Oh, we're going to send you back in time. And guess what? It, nothing that you did happened or mattered. So, like, I understand that, like, there's alternative explanations, but I'm telling you, if you forget the explanation and just think about that experience, first-time experience, playing through the game, you get to the end, you get sent back, and you're like, okay, the game's not over. I'm still playing. And then you start to play, just, and you realize, oh, it, shit. I'm just that, doing that, what I that's, already did. That's definitely your interpretation, and it may be part of the reason why you hate that lot. No, you don't want No, but, it, uh, like, but, but that was the thing is, not did, my were you not sent back all. to being a child where nothing you did happened yet? That's not true, though. Ugh. Ugh. Oh, my God. I'm making myself sick. Did I really say that? I, I literally had the ending playing on loop back here, although it's like a 24-minute thing right now. They're doing the whole escape from the castle, running down it while the rocks are falling. And all. Look, I, I'm i sorry. First off, I owe a major apology to Andre's restart. I, we've already talked behind the scenes, so it's, we're all good. We, we never were bad. Uh, but I, I do owe an apology to him. Um mostly for the way I acted, not for being wrong, because sometimes people are just wrong, uh, but for being so certain that I wasn't wrong and, and arguing to the point that I almost acted like he was an idiot, but I was the one being an idiot. I also need to apologize to my audience, the hundreds of you that were in the chat, well, really tens of dozens of you that were in the chat, telling me how wrong I was and saying how, what an embarrassment it is. You're not wrong. You're right. It was completely embarrassing. Uh, beyond all of that, I need to apologize to anyone who watched the podcast after the fact because that entire segment is near unwatchable. Not just because I'm so vehemently wrong, but because I'm constantly cutting off Andre. Now, I want to be a little bit fair to myself on the cutting off point. Um, so we had a new setup for our podcast yesterday and like literally 30, 40 minutes into the podcast, somebody mentioned that Andre's restart was peaking and, and being too loud. So he turned down the microphone on his side. However, the problem is that turned down the volume on our side as well. So from that point moving forward, I could barely hear him. 
So when I was cutting him off, to me, it didn't sound like I was cutting him off because I couldn't really hear him talk. In the future, there's ways we can remedy this. We can go back to wearing headphones, which I really don't want to do. We don't really have the most comfortable of headphones. Um, even, you know, we, we've tried a numerous different types. Honestly, we just need to get some really expensive ones uh, that are comfortable to wear for long sessions because otherwise it just hurts. Uh, but it is what it is. I also have my children sleeping in the house, so I don't want to necessarily have all the noise blacked out around me with headphones. So that is something that we obviously need to correct before the show, not during the show. Uh, that way there's not all of a sudden I can't hear our guest for like half the show. That's, that's not good. Um, so that's one thing that led to that. And another thing is just, yeah, I was so wrong and everybody knew it. It is one of the most embarrassing moments of my Zelda fan life. I just beat Ocarina of Time two months ago and swore by this concept of a time loop ending that doesn't exist. I'm an idiot. Honestly, moments like this happen, and, and, and I call this my old man moment, right? Um, because I'm, I'm in my mid thirties, right? I'm not getting any younger, you know, by the time, you know, Breath of the Wild 2 comes out, the next Zelda that comes out after that, I'll probably be in my forties. And reality is, uh, my memory might not be working as well as it once did. Apparently even my short term memory from two months ago. Um, it's, I, I don't want to blame that. I'm just, I'm just being dumb. Um, there was a moment last night that I was laying in bed thinking about this after the fact. And I go, why the hell do people watch me on YouTube? I mean, I know I'm a fun-loving guy. and We have giveaways, including one right now for a Switch OLED bundle and $100 to a charity of your choice. All you got to do is be subscribed to the channel. But beyond my personality, which you guys can have a lot of fun with, and you know, we'll have some drinks on live streams, and, and, and I'll be bubbly, and we'll have... Man, oh man, oh man. I always felt like... No matter what I said or did or was wrong about in gaming, I could always fall back on the fact that I know my Zelda and I know it back and forth because I've been covering it for so long. And then just have such a bad brain fart to the point that it leads to a 40 minute, essentially me bitching and being completely wrong for 40 straight minutes on a podcast and wasting everybody's time, including our guest. Um, it, I, I don't know that I can forgive myself for that. Other people have come on to say, hey, it happens, but not like that. Other people might be wrong in a moment, but it doesn't go on for 40 minutes where you feel like you're laughing at your guest when really you're the one that should be getting laughed at. You, I mean, I'm, I completely own it. I, I messed up. I, it, it wasn't entertaining. It wasn't fun. Um, this video might be poking a little fun at me and having some good times, but it, it, man, this sucks. I am no longer consider myself an expert at anything in video games. Then again, do any of you guys watch me because I'm an expert? Or do you just watch me because I'm entertaining, fun, bring a good personality, and you like my opinions on games? I have no idea. What I do know is I messed up. I'm sorry. It is what it is. My Zelda fan card has, you know, my Zelda mega fan card anyway has been revoked. I'm still looking forward to uh, Breath of the Wild 2 no matter what. We'll see if I decide if I want to put in the work to re-earn that Zelda fan card and get back into Zelda fan theories. Um, then again, I'm the one that gave myself the Zelda fan mega card. Nobody else gave it to me. So I guess I'm just revoking my own self-opinion. So this video is all about me not only apologizing for my massive mistake, but also revoking something that I imaginarily... is that uh, That's right. I'm saying that's a word right now. It's probably not gave to myself <sighs> whatever it is what it is <sighs> this is not the video i thought was going to be made today you know i thought we were gonna have a cool podcast get back to the news we did do a, a quick little news video on sales earlier today but man oh man oh man whoever thought and like i never thought in a million years in the back of my mind i'm going to be the one so dead wrong about such an obvious thing that everybody knows and has known for almost 30 years man no, I'm not retiring. Sorry. I know there's some haters out there that are like, it's time to delete your channel. I ain't going anywhere, folks. The hackers couldn't take me down. The haters couldn't take me down. And me being so blatantly wrong about something Zelda related. So to all my haters out there, if you thought this meant the end of Nintendo Prime, <laughs> oh, I ain't going anywhere. 
And to everyone out there that thinks my Zelda fan card should be thrown in the shredder and burned for all eternity. Too bad. I still love Zelda just as much today as I did yesterday and have the last 20 years of my life. 23 years to be exact. So, yeah, I'm good. I'm good over here. We're all good. Andre's restarting me are all good. There's no issues there. I do feel really bad about the type of content I put out yesterday. It is what it is. It's embarrassing. Maybe the most embarrassing thing I've ever done on my channel. Even more embarrassing than like a couple years ago when I was really e-bagging and stuff. And I fully admit that happened. And that was really embarrassing. This is worse. This is something I always thought I was an expert in. And then I mess up that badly. This is the ending right here. Look at this. This is the ending of Ocarina of Time on the N64. I know this ending. I've experienced this ending two months ago. What's wrong with me? I'm just getting older. I need to be a little, a little more st less stubborn as well. I got this stubborn nature to me when I'm so sure about something that I'm so obviously wrong on. Man, and the thing is, I had a computer right in front of me. I could have looked at, like, literally, the, the ending takes about 24 minutes, 20-ish minutes or so. I have a computer right here I could have played the ending on during that whole debate and just, oh, yep, I'm wrong. And I didn't. I got to be better. I'll be better in the future, guys. I'm sorry about that. That being said, I ain't going anywhere, baby. Nintendo Prime is here to stay. Love it or hate it. Hackers couldn't take me out. Haters couldn't take me out. And me just being a dumbass couldn't take me out. Can anything stop this hype train? I guess YouTube could just decide to terminate my channel again. You bastards. Ah, uh, folks. I'll catch you guys in the very next video tomorrow.